Hey there, Shauna Karish here, coming to you from Via Nova with another Ask Shauna Answer. Okay, this question comes from Marilee, and she says, My horse is a 13-year-old Arabian English show horse that I have just retired and would like to turn into a trail horse. He is smart, very high energy, and highly motivated by food. He has also spent most of his life either in barn or at a show. He spooks at anything unfamiliar, so a friend suggested I try target training to help him overcome his fear of almost anything, everything. Yes, he is responding really well and can target his stall toy, a ball hanging in the back wall, even when I'm not in a stall. I am a little concerned that one, he may develop aggression for the treats, and two, that he will only respond when treats are offered, when I really need him to respond when I'm already on his back or not near enough to give him a treat. Can you give me some advice on how to continue training using fewer treats or things I can do to avoid the aggression developing in the first place? Thank you. Certainly. And if you're not familiar with my podcast, Equine Clicker 101, I highly recommend you take a look at it. I have some spookiness uh, exercises in there. I think I have food manners. I just recorded a food aggression um, uh, lesson that will come out in, you know, probably a week or so. So there's some, some resources there if you're not familiar with them. But basically, let's talk about the food first. So what I try to look for is relaxation around food. So I'm looking for him to be uh, softer eyes, more patient, softer head carriage. So in the very beginning, a lot of times with a horse who is very interested in food, I'm, I may have them turning their head away because I want to be the opposite of, of what they think. They think go to the food, get the food, eat the food. So I don't try to teach them the very opposite. So that I would rather them way over there to make to make it very, very clear. But then eventually, I want it to not be turning the head away. I want the head to be still. And then I want the head to be relaxed. So at first, it's like I'm turning my head away, turning my head away. Like, okay, I got, I got it. I look for a, a, a second of, of not moving. And I click and I reinforce that. Always feeding where I want the hand to be, the head to be. So that's the first part. It makes sure you're feeding way over where you want the head to be. So what it, it doesn't accidentally teach them, go get the food, go get the food, go get the food. So it teaches them, wait here for the food. The food comes to me. I wait here, I come to the food. So at first it's, you know, and I get a second of that. And I click and I reinforce way over where I want their head to be. I don't really worry about too much what happens in between the click and the food actually getting there. I also try to be sure that I, I don't have my hand in the bucket when I click and I'm not getting the food before I click. So it's very important that it goes click, here comes the action and here comes the food. So, so they start learning. The click tells me that I'm getting fed. So if I don't hear the click, I shouldn't anticipate the food. So that is one piece I look for. And then it's, it's, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. And then pretty soon I have them still, but that's not really what I'm looking for, but it's better. I'm shaping a more quiet, relaxed horse. So I'll take this because it's better than this, you know, at least it's this. And then as I start to see, and this is, this is a key point when I give them food and they're eating a lot, you will notice things soften. The eye looks softer. It doesn't look so desperate. The head isn't going anywhere. They're just enjoying their food. They're, they're eating their food. So that to me is what is one of the most relaxed times I get. So I click and feed that and click and feed that and click and feed that. So I really then can start to get them where they think, okay, I can just sit here. So I want them to think standing quietly, quiet, relaxed is the most important behavior in the whole entire world. So I want that to be a, a basically a default position when they don't know what to do. I don't want them to start making stuff up and jumping and bowing and pushing and doing anything of that. I want them to go, I'm just going to stand here and I need to be cognizant enough to go, oh, that's telling me something. Okay. Let's, let's reinforce that. That's a good choice that you just made. I want to really reinforce that and encourage that. And then it also kind of lets me know, maybe I wasn't being clear in other things to do. Maybe this was a place you went to for a reset. Cause you're like, I don't know what we're doing. Or maybe you just, I wasn't paying enough attention. I would rather them do that than, than, you know, bite at me or something. So, the food aggression is really, 
it's not really food aggression. It's behavior that gets reinforced by the food. So being aware of what you're feeding. But there's some ways that we can really help to set them up for success. One, I don't work with them when they're hungry. I always be sure that they've had a fair share of hay. For horses that are really obsessed about the food, I will go in and give them, I try to go work with hay pellets. So hay pellets are not quite as exciting. They're not quite as you know, manic, you know, like sometimes you see the horse go, oh my gosh, I never get that. And I want that. So uh, utilizing something that's not quite so exciting can help. But so I'll give them, you know, a few, like a little scoop of hay pellets before I start. So they've had some of those. So it kind of takes the edge off a little bit. So they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I use this analogy, you know, if I, uh, if, if somebody came into the room with a plate of chocolate chip cookies and if they're warm and I could smell them and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love chocolate chip cookies. And then I'm thinking, I, I want a chocolate chip cookie. And I'm thinking, what do I have to do to get a chocolate chip cookie? So, you know, they give me some instructions of something to do and I, I do it. And then they give me a chocolate chip. You know, I'm going to be like, yeah, okay, I'll take it. But I, I want a cookie, you know, and I'm going to still be in that place that is pursuing that cookie. But if somebody gave me a couple cookies, I'm going to go, oh, okay, I got some cookies. I feel better. I've enjoyed the cookies. I'm not feeling like I'm not going, I'm going to miss out on that. And so I, I still want more cookies. You know, I'm still going to want, want to get more of those cookies. But I, I, I can feel a little more settled and relaxed. And I think sometimes we can unintentionally be a little stingy with the amount of food we're feeding. So a lot of times I find big handfuls are quite settling. So, so that's what I'll do. I will make sure there's big handfuls and then pretty soon they realize there's plenty of food here. I don't need to be crazy about the food. There's plenty of food and it helps them to settle. The more they learn behavior, the more clarity they get, they tend to settle becomes because clarity from what I see brings a lot of relaxation. They're like, yeah, I know what to do. As opposed to like, I'm not sure what to do. I'm going to make something up. And so it lets them kind of confidently go and perform that behavior. But it's up to us to look at it and think I'm going to reinforce it when it looks more controlled. It looks more relaxed. It has less tension in it. So, but you know, so looking for what you want to see and clicking for what you want to see. And remember, sometimes I might think this is where I want it to look like, but it's not there yet. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get that horse who's turning their head away manically just to go, okay. You know, I have to kind of go, well, that's better. I'll take that and I'll take that and I'll take that. And I take, and I shape it to becoming more and more of what I want. So it is a shifting criteria and increasing criteria, but it's increasing so little uh, because I want the game to be afoot. I want them to think there's always, I need to keep figuring out what is it today, but I want the success to be so prevalent that they are in it because they're like, I always win this game, you know? So I, or I, you know, I, I always get this game right. Somehow I figure it out all the time. And so one, we're creating a horse who likes to solve the puzzle, likes to play the game, but then it also makes it easier to start to build duration. So when they think if it's all about the food, it will remain all about the food. But if we continue to raise the criteria a little bit, this is where the art meets the science and a little hard to do because it's not the same for every horse. But I want to raise the criteria a little bit from the get-go, from the very first session where I teach the horse to turn their head away. And they're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I have my side bucket that's like Fort Knox. So they can't get in it. So at some point that... I don't know what to do. And I click and I reinforce that and I feed it and I feed it and I feed it and I feed it. And then I look for them to do it again. Okay. So now they're getting the idea that the head goes away. Well, now I'm going to look for it to be a little bit longer, tiny, tiny, tiny bit. You know, at first it's just swinging, but can I get it just for one second? Or if they come back, could they turn away? And so I start raising the criteria just a little bit from the get go. And it really is the part to me that I see that makes it different. We start making the game be, be very important. I love like crossword puzzles and I love games. I like, I like solving puzzles. I like games. I like, I like to think through things and, and, and that's very reinforcing to me. And that's what I feel like the training should be for our horses. It should become something that, and if you gave me the same crossword puzzle every single day with the same outcome every single day, I would just be like, I mean, I'd do it and I'd fill it in, but I would just be like, blah, 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 blah. Where's my money? You know, or whatever. Let's say they said, I'm going to pay you $10 to do the crossword puzzle. But first I'm doing it because I really like the crossword puzzle. But if it's the same puzzle every single day, I'm just going to fill, 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 fill money. 
because I, this, this, is, this wasn't intriguing to me. This didn't engage my mind. This didn't get me problem solving and, and wanting to be there. So what we want to teach is, is problem solvers. So by doing that, you're setting yourself up to start to build duration. So first of all, recognizing that whatever you're feeding is what you're going to see more of. So if you feel like he's getting a little bit like his, his energy is ramping up for the food, what I would start to do is start to say, okay, let's go back to lesson, lesson number one, stop and relax and keep your head to yourself. So even with my Minty, who's almost 28, I'll be 28 next month. I still, when I'm doing sessions with him, I'll do busy stuff, quiet, stand still. Busy stuff, let's stand still and be quiet. So I, I kind of undulate between the two so that, so that we are having this mix, but I keep going back to, to the standing quietly, keeping your head to yourself, relaxing, bring it up, bringing it all down so that I make sure that I, I keep focus on that behavior because this is what us humans do. We go, yay. Okay. I got the relaxation. We stand quietly by ourselves. This is great. And we're doing good with that. So now let's work on your spin and your backup and going to the target and doing the thing and doing the thing and doing the thing. And pretty soon they see the behavior as you know, what works doing stuff. So then they want to do behavior, you know, they want to do, they think of it as active. So what has worked for them to get the most food is to be doing something. So I want to teach them actually what I want to be the most reinforcing behavior in the whole world. Cause to me, it's the most important behavior in the whole world is I want them to be standing quietly relaxed with their head to themselves. So starting to, uh, so, so I also, if I start to see things like, okay, he's getting a little mouthy, you know, I need to, or he's, you know, a little pushy or a little too active or a little, I can see he's winding up. I can just go, okay, let's stand beside each other. And I take a deep breath myself and I just soften my shoulders. And I stand for a second and say, look, everything about me tells you I'm not about to do anything so that I can make that clear. If I stand there like with my hands, you know, they're like, what's going to happen? What are they doing? Or she, you know, but I just go, I'm just standing here and they have a tendency to go, okay, I know what that means. So I want them to be able to stand there. So if you feel like it gets tense, I go back to that and I say, just relax. And this means all it tells me is that I might be reinforcing the, the excitedness or the ramping up or the demanding kind of feel to it. And what I need to do is go back to that quiet, relaxed behavior, delivering the food to him, him not coming to me for the food. So that's what I'll do. If I feel like I've gotten to the, beyond that point and he is getting a little bit if I wait for any mere period of time he he gets kind of scary for you because <laughs> I've seen that too <laughs> and I, I've experienced that too I will go on the outside of a fence outside of a gate on the other side of a gate on the other side of a fence and I and I can stand there and I can feel safe and I can stay relaxed because I know we have protected contact and and I will work and teach that exercise and be sure that he knows we stand here together I keep my head to myself I relax and I would start to build on that little teeny tiny bits at a time building a little bit more duration and if he is a horse who likes to go <laughs> sounds like he is what I then do is go okay we stand still I feed quite heavily for standing still and then I'd move and do some behaviors but I would say the m more heavy <laughs> on the reinforcement for standing quietly for the going. The going is oftentimes for a lot of horses is, is much more reinforcing as it is. The activity kind of serves itself. If there kind of was horses, you go, okay, this was really good. I'm going to reinforce you a lot for this. Now we get to go do some things for a little bit. We get to move, we get to walk, we get to trot and it's great. And I'll still reinforce them for that. But then, then I'll say, okay, and let's stand quietly again. And the standing quietly is very heavy handed feeding from me because I, I realize that this is harder than this is. This is more fun. This is more challenging. And this is what babies do. I, and so I need to make this, this more challenging thing be really, really reinforcing and looking for that softening and relaxing. So that's what I do there.